Hey everybody, it's Wilbits. We're playing Professor Layton the Last Spectre. Our story so far. When they are denied at the police station, Emmy volunteers to go to London to find some information. Will Emmy return safely with the information that Layton needs, or will she die after having learned nothing? Hmm. Chapter 6, London's Hidden Secrets. So, we're doing an Emmy chapter today. I made good time. Now to get those papers the professor wanted. Where would the professor keep his notes? I would assume in his hat, so... Wow, we are in a whole new place. What lovely weather, just right for a jog. There's fewer things to say about everything. Oh, there's a lecture going on in there. Let's keep it down. Oh no! No, no, no. We're not talking to you yet, tomato head. I need the professor's notes first. I can't leave yet. Please. Is there no, are there no hint coins out here or puzzles? Because, yeah, that's all I care about. Oh, something. Yeah, coins in the bush. I'm gonna hit these individual windows. That's fine. This is good. We'll just head in now. That's all I wanted. Now we can talk to Dean Del Mono. And he has a puzzle for us. Amy, I've been looking for you! Dean Del Mona, I've been very far away for a long time now. I was worried that something happened to you. <laughs> Sorry, sir. The professor's investigation is proceeding well. I'm here to get materials for him. I see. That's just grand. So, Leighton is not in London at the moment. That's correct, sir. My apologies for leaving without informing you. No, no, that's quite all right. It must have been very important business then. I'm sure that he will write a thorough paper upon his return. Leighton's office is down the hallway there. Check the nameplate. It's the one that says Professor Leighton. Thank you very much, sir. By the way, Amy, if you're not too rushed, may I ask your help with a puzzle? I was trying to get Leighton help with it the other day and then he just left. Of course, sir. Well, you see, there's a puzzle that I'm having trouble with. My little granddaughter asked me if I can solve it. It's the same one. But I'm on the verge of giving up. Well, I, well, 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 I to do that? I'm sure my granddaughter will lose all respect for her grandpa. I have bad news. She already has. You can't allow that, sir. I would be happy to help. Tricky Tomes. Uh-oh. Here's a bookshelf crammed with thick, heavy encyclopedias, arranged as shown. All the books have the same depth, and they fit perfectly onto the shelf. There is one book that nobody ever takes from the shelf first, no matter who is browsing the shelf. Touch which book that is. Huh. So this is a logic puzzle to which I do not know the answer. Let's think about this. A book that nobody ever takes from the shelf first, no matter who is browsing the shelf. So it's either going to be a small book, maybe, because it's hard to get. They all fit perfectly on there. Hmm. We have to use logic. This is a... These are tricky puzzles. So, is it because this is really hard to get to that matters for number eight? That's what I would lean towards, because if they all fit perfectly, then they actually can't, like, literally fit their fingers in. But here there's some space, and here they could grab it. So any of these others, they could fit out. But if it actually fits in perfectly, 
Is it just that it's literally, is it literally that they, not that it's not an interesting book, but that they just can't fit it out? So that their fingers, there's nothing for them to grip onto. I'm gonna try to draw a hand here, in case you guys don't know what hands look like. I can't reach in and get it, because they're not giving me any more info than that. Let's try it. I'll handle this one, Professor. Oh, good. Huh. I think no I was problem. about to wildly overthink, wildly overthink that puzzle. Okay. Encyclopedia number eight is the only book that cannot be taken out first. There is no way to get it without removing another book before you get to it. Mmm. Okay. A new action for the puppet theater, flattened. I see you are the perfect person to assist Leighton! Keep up the good work, Amy! Leave it to me, sir. Professor Leighton is in good hands. I knew I could rely on you! Professor Leighton's office is just down that hallway! Alright, thanks, Potato Man. I wonder what they'll do with these trees when they're taller. As the professor's assistant, I'll have to check this board daily. It looks as if the second floor is full of offices. Hey, you know, solving puzzles, looking for hint coins, trying to find cool stuff. This spot between the stairs does nothing but gather dust. You should you to put like a statue there or something. It'd be a great statue spot. Oh! This is his office? I didn't think it was- I thought I was gonna have to go upstairs. Oh, I haven't seen the professor since he rushed out of here yesterday! Who are you? And why are you in the professor's office? I'll kill you! Or could I ask you the same thing? Home, Rosa! Home on the cleaning staff! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm the professor's new assistant, Imi Altava. A pleasure to meet you, Rosa. Likewise! The professor has an assistant now, oh, that's good news! Professor asked me to fetch some papers of his. Ha! Good luck organizing his own office! He's a puzzle the professor still hasn't solved! <laughs> hmm. He asked me to pick up any newspapers and his notes. Notes and newspapers? Alright, well, let's take a look here. Is there gonna be a puzzle somewhere in here? Whoa. Fish is telling me where the coins are. Love it. This is exactly what an archaeologist's office should be like. Uh, here they are, notes and newspapers, all together. You found them, good work. Thanks, Rosa. I'd better get back to the professor. You take good care of him now. Aha, here's the puzzle that I wanted. So this is the professor's desk. What's this? A puzzle on his desk? I'm sure he'd appreciate if I just solved it for him while he was out. He hates solving puzzles. I found an old bag while I was doing a spot of spring cleaning. What do you think was inside? See if you can create the mystery item using the three different pieces forming a bag shape below. Oh, and put the finished article on the table next to where the bag was. Okay. So I can spin these things. Touch the symbol that appears when you let go. This is a hat. I think? Oh no it isn't. I thought these would go together like that. And that would be the top of the hat. Unless I can flip them. I think I can only rotate them. Oh no, I can do this. Yeah, it's a hat. Ha! I think I've got this one. I was immediately I right. Can't let a puzzle intimidate you. Correct! Professor Layton simply wouldn't look like himself without his tall, silk hat. And who's this guy? Who's this jerk wearing his hat? Get out. That jerk. In the weird glasses. Does he just keep puzzles on hand? I shouldn't be surprised by such things. He's Professor Layton, after all. 
coins. The drawers are all full of papers and strange objects, too. Alright. Is there anything else here? What are all these artifacts? There we go. Oh! There was another puzzle! Of course there was! There's something stuck here between the drawers! So many puzzles. Wait, is this the same one again? There was a tall silk hat inside the old bag. It's a bit too large to keep around, though. Is there any way we can make it smaller? You're not allowed to let the pieces overlap, of course. So this is a different puzzle. Is there any way we could make a smaller hat with the same pieces? Like so? That no longer looks like a hat though, does it? Huh. Let's see. How do we make this smaller? Could you use negative space? Like that? Does that make a hat? Yep. I'll handle this one, Professor. That puzzle was no problem. Very tricky way to get two puzzles out of the same mechanics. It does look smaller now, doesn't it? It's also not a hat. I can't wear a negative, a nega hat. That's a hat that doesn't exist. Who would have ever thought a puzzle would be stuck here? Well, I suppose that's just part of being Professor Herschel Layton. I guess I never thought about how many puzzles the professor would have in his office. Are there more? More puzzles? Is there, a, is there an additional puzzle? I don't know, I feel like two puzzles in one room is already a lot. I'm pretty content with that. The professor has trouble focusing on things other than his research, so keep an eye on him. Alright. Well, we got his notes. We got his research. Is that all we're gonna do? Did you find what you were looking for, Amy? Yes, sir. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Dean Del Mono, did you do something different recently? Why, what do you mean? Oh, nothing, I guess. Dean Del Mono's head seems... a little shinier than I remember, and a lot more potato-y. A lot more. Whoop. Almost missed that. Thank you, Fishu. Thank you, Fishy Fish. I got the professor's notes. Now it's off to Scotland Yard to find those records. With Inspector Grosky's help, I should be able to get what I need. I sure hope Grosky's there. Scooter, don't fail me now. Broom, broom, broom. To the yard. Scotland Yard. Now to find the inspector for the records I need. A new episode's been added to the trunk. Emmy's memory. Well, let's look at that first. Because I I enjoy some memory, some episodes well enough. I've, I, now, am I missing some, or do these just come in in a weird order? Because I'm definitely I've definitely got some gaps. I know the professor doesn't recall, but this place sure takes me back to the day we met. Ah, he doesn't remember. But I didn't do anything! <laughs> you and the rest of the pickpocket scum in this city are finished! He says it was you, are you calling him a liar? No, of course not! Ugh. She stole the wallet that was in my pocket. Liar! This is ridiculous! I'm telling you, this child was confusing me with someone else! Oh, that old one! Is that right, son? You just this confused! This guy's just hair. She did it! Shut it! Has he kidnapped someone and stuffed My them in his, <laughs> in his jacket? It's all under control! East lady here swipe this poor boy's wallet! Could you give me the details of this case, Officer Grosky? The details, oh? Well, of course I can. 
As he was walking through the streets, this young man noticed that his wallet was missing. He felt that the women, the woman who had just passed him seemed suspicious, and he informed a patrolman. When the patrolman checked the contents of a bag, he found the stolen wallet. Those are the details of the case. Open and shut, if you ask me. Could I see the stolen wallet? Hmm. Young man, did you inform the officer that this isn't actually your wallet? What? What do you mean? Well, it's a style preferred mostly by women. Is this your mother's wallet by any chance? Perhaps she asked you to run a few errands, and perhaps you saw a pair of new shoes you liked. Perhaps you just couldn't resist buying those shoes that you are currently wearing. And perhaps you got scared and are now trying to pretend that the money was stolen. Is that right? Uh, uh Dunkmeister, I don't know what G4G is. <laughs> Uh, I... No, it's not right! In order to put the blame on someone else, you place the empty wallet in this young lady's purse. Is this correct, son? What kind of proof do you have to back up this accusation, Leighton? Be calm, Grosky. I'll explain once the boy admits the truth. There's nothing to admit. Uh... Are you certain? A gentleman never lies, remember. I didn't know, but everyone else has them. I just wanted to fit in. But this way? Do you think you'd be able to truly enjoy these shoes, knowing that this innocent woman was in prison? If you spend your entire life trying to fit in with others, you'll never belong anywhere. In this life, one must always be true to oneself. Is that clear? Yes, sir. You're right. I'm sorry. That's a good lad. Come with me and I'll help you return the shoes. You will? You're... You're not gonna arrest me? Well, that's really up to Officer Grosky here. Making a false report is punishable by 15 years in Siberia. But I'll let it slide. Leighton, how did you know? Well, I would see, could see his hand shaking as if he was the one who had been caught. His shoes were brand new. There was only a bit of change left in the wallet. And this woman here doesn't seem at all like the type who would rob a young boy. Once you examine those elements, a logical conclusion arises. Hmm. So that's how he's say you here again. Oh. Maybe you could take up etymology. <gasps> Wait! Thank you so much. No need to thank me, miss. Helping a young lady like you is the duty of every gentleman. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. I love you forever. Hmm. He called me a lady. Doesn't he know? Wait! Uh, come back here. What's your name? That miss is Herschel Layton. Don't let the hat fool you. That is a man of powerful intellect. <laughs> he helps us <laughs> out from time to time with our tougher cases. You know, uh, pickpockets and whatnot. Herschel Layton. I'll remember that. I'll remember that for the rest of my life. And now I'm actually the professor's assistant. <laughs> wow. I won't let you down, Professor. I'll get the records we need. All right. Let me see. Coins. Coins are what we really need. Wow, to think it's been standing for over a century. What? Big Ben? I feel like it's been there longer than that, but I don't actually know. Top hat profiling. Yeah, there's the coins. Alright. Yay! Different, different policemen who aren't the same one over and over again. There's an interview with the deputy commissioner in here. We'll talk to him in a moment. First we find some coins. Yeah, we'll talk to him. No puzzle, huh? Excuse me, where can I find Inspector Grosky? Uh, he's out. Uh, leave a message. Actually, I'm kind of in a hurry, and I need to look at some files. Dr. Tomatoes, lady. Sorry, no access without authorization. What kind of records are you looking for, anyway? 
I need the archived reports from a town named Miss Tallery. Miss Tallery? Ha! Here, crime reports for the year could fit on a matchbook. That was police humor. You can't see them without authorization. Fine. Can you at least tell me where Inspector Grosky is? That I don't know. You might be able to ask around a bit. You can see if anyone's up on the uh, second floor. Very well. I will see if anyone's up on the second floor after I pull a... After I pull a coin out of that bush. Alright, up the stairs, up the stairs. It is kind of an anachronism stew. The game kind it, it sort of kind of takes place in like 1960s London, but not really because there's a lot of modern things here still. So, if I spot this man, I'll know to stop him. A man who just is a solid gray blob. Road safety first. I'm always careful on my scooter. Hello, plant. Your leaves are looking nice and green. So an anachronism is when uh, things from one time period are in a time period where they shouldn't exist. Like if you saw a medieval knight using a cell phone, that would be anachronistic. Some anachronisms are small, like if you watch a movie that took place in 1993 and they're driving like a car from 2016, then that's an anachronism, but most people aren't going to care about it. That's Prime Minister the Hawks. I don't care much for him. <laughs> oh no, is that Monica? Monica, no. Emmy, Emmy Alcava. How long has it been? Monica! Hi! Sorry, can't chat! I'm in the middle of something! In the middle of something at the police station? Are you investigating something? I bet you came to ask Inspector Grosky for help because you're in over your head, right? Do you know where Grosky is? Monica! He's been working that case in central London for weeks now. Thanks, Monica. Let's catch up soon. Miss you. Bye. Bye. It's been great seeing you. Do I have please annoy me written on my forehead? God. Amy Octave, I hate her. Monica. Monica. Let's talk to her again. That case in central London is taking a burn of grasky time. Oh, I'm sorry, are you still here? I will gladly leave. I will leave right now. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Monica. Well, that's the thing, is that, um, PLV, is that Ace Attorney is kind of slightly in the future, and Professor Layton is kind of slightly in the past, um, but also they both live at the same time. If Grosky is in central London, I should check the city center. Someone must have seen him. The answer is magic. How can it, how can Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton live at the same time? They do, and they don't at the same time. There's so many characters. I'm gonna get to this guy in a minute. Look at all these colors. No, 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 no time for shopping now. As much as I would love to. Alright, got the coins. And a puzzle from this guy. Wow, wow. Excuse me, but did you happen to see a burly sort of fellow come through here? The disheveled pair of fellows stormed through here. They clearly had no respect for nature. <laughs> Which way did they go? They headed over that way, across the street. Thank you. Wait, is that it? Aren't you interested in taking a moment to enjoy these flowers? Please take a moment to relax. Enjoy the flowers and this puzzle. Thanks. Thanks, Greasy Florist. Which is your name, I assume. A young man tells his local florist about three games he intends to play by picking petals off of flowers one at a time. He'll start with, she loves me, she loves me not, and move on to happy, unhappy, so-so. With the final flower, he'll choose whether to buy his sweetheart 
a bouquet, a cake, a ring, or a book. The florist decides to pick out a bouquet that he thinks will give the best answer on the last petal of each flower. Which bunch does the young man walk away with? So, that means, all right, let's do some writing. Oh, they're telling us how many how many petals there are, right? So, um, she loves me, she loves me not is there's only two answers and one answer is good and one answer is bad so the good answer for she loves me is always one zero one zero so we want a circle and that only means that it has to be an odd answer because if it's even she's gonna get she loves me not so between that we have happy unhappy so so for which happy is good, um, unhappy is bad, and so-so is also bad, because it's not the best answer. So-so is okay, but a pattern will go like that. So for that, we basically want something that's a multiple of three plus one. So, like, four is good. So it has to be three x plus one for our thing. For that, so of our answers, it's probably 7. Oh, it could also be 13. Hmm, right? Because if it were... Oh, each one has 7. Is that the case? Oh yeah, each flower has that many. So it isn't actually... Let's erase these. There's 11 petals per flower, so it's actually 33, um, 7 times 4 is 21, 16 times 3 is something I should know, 16, 32, this is actually 48 petals, and 13, 26, this is 39, right? So I still maintain that it's got to be an odd number. But these are all multiples of three. So that doesn't work. I don't think. Let's see, a young man tells the local florist about three games. He says, wait, there was a third game. Oh, I have to have to get that with the final flower he'll choose. Oh, shoot. Okay. I'm doing this wrong. He's not playing the same game with all three. So the first game is every other is a ring the good thing to get in a bouquet a cake a ring or a book because that means that it is a a flower right or would it be a bouquet because if he guesses the bouquet that means he buys another bouquet for the florist a bouquet so that means the first game is zero zero x right and then happy, obviously. Happy. Bad. Bad. And then the other game is going to be we want something that is bouquet. We don't care about cakes, rings, or books. Because those don't involve buying those things. So. If that's the case... It has to be an odd number, so we know it's not C. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 would get us this one. And it doesn't hit any of these other numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Whereas here, if we're doing... Happy, unhappy, so-so, happy, unhappy, so-so, happy, unhappy, so-so, happy, unhappy, so-so, happy. I think it's D. I am gonna say D, because what that's the one that lets us buy a bouquet. A bouquet. <laughs> yep, this is a puzzle it's about a florist convincing you to buy more flowers. He doesn't care. <laughs> 
Yingmen took away the flowers with 13 petals each, the results of the game she, were she loves me, happy, and bouquet. It seems reasonable that a florist would want the man to buy another bouquet, right? Fantastic. A new course for the toy train, Augustus's business. Wow, I'm, I'm tearing through puzzles left and right. I was born to be the professor's assistant. Clear your mind and just breathe. It's important to appreciate nature when you're in this city. Yes, thank you, I will. I must be going now. Eh, some people just don't get it. You gotta stop and smell the flowers. Train time! We're gonna do trains. Augustus's business. Wow, there's... okay. Being a florist, it's also my job to train budding gardeners. I get called out north, south, east, and west to pass on my horticultural expertise. Do you think you could help me find a way to my goals that stems from these two train lines? I have two trains? I don't understand. I'm doing something wrong here. I'm certain of it. It's not as easy as this, is it? What happens if I do this? Oh, I can't do that, because then it just completely blocks the road. Okay, alright, that's fair. Alright. So this game is all about dodging this car. Is what we really need here. Uh oh. That's not gonna work. That was a head on collision. Is there a way to get each one so that they just don't cross the tracks at all? No, because I have to cross here. It absolutely has to cross at some point, or I can't get this one at all. Hmm. Alright. The good news is, I really like this train song. Try something like that. Since when do cars not stop for trains? It's a really good question. So clearly this has got to come down here in some way. Can we get these to cross over each other? Is this the sort of thing we're looking for? Oh no! Stop car, stop! Shoot! This car's the worst! Oh, the car came out of the other side? Is this some kind of weird Pac-Man car? Alright, let's cross it over here. I didn't realize. I thought the car was going to bounce back and forth. That's different. That's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, Alright, car, keep moving. Keep moving, car! 
Learn to stop for trains. Because if you hit a train, you're going to be hurt worse than... Thank you, Augustus is You're going to be hurt worse than the other. You crazy card. Slam her into her, man. Okay. 